Okay, let's go ahead and get started today. And uh, good to be in God's house today. Thank you for coming and being here. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12, big book of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah's got 66 chapters in it, and it's uh, actually a miniature Bible, just like the 66, 66 books of the Bible, Isaiah, Isaiah is broken down like that. So it's a, it's a beautiful picture of the Word of God, and it proclaims the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was given to the Hebrew people so they would know of the Messiah. They could identify the Messiah. The Lord says something here about our salvation in chapter 12 of Isaiah. And so I want us to look at something about the, the wells of salvation. And that's what I'm going to preach on today. The wells of salvation. And a lot of us around here have wells. We know what a well is. A well is where you draw water. And so many times we, we're we able to, we, we're fed, our homes are fed sometimes by wells. And then sometimes we're on county water or city water, but we might have a, a well in the yard, something to draw water, to water the grass or whatever. So, so a lot of us, we understand what a well is. Well, a well back in those days was, something that we all are familiar with, and that was they had, to, they had to lower down a bucket, a bucket down in the water, and they had to draw that water up. Some of, some of you may have remembered some, uh, some old homesteads and things like that, that that still had a well, and they, could, they would let the, let the bucket down, and, and sometimes they had a crank or a handle, and they would draw that bucket up full of water. And I tell you what, on a on a uh, on a hot day in the summertime, uh, when you were out there farming or whatever, and and you went over to that well and and you drew that that bucket up from way down in the bottom of that well, up came this cool water. And on a hot day when it was about a hundred degrees out there in the shade, you'd get a dipper of that water and boy, in it. And it tasted so good when you were hot, you were sweaty, you had been working outside, and that, that dipper full of cold water, it would taste so good. Now, I, I was raised in the city, so I never experienced that. <clears throat> but I can tell you, it was just as hot in the city, uh, and, and there's many a time that we'd go over there, of course, as kids, you know, you know we had, there were always faucets around the house, and You'd sit there and open that faucet up and we'd put our lips up around that faucet and there's no telling how many germs we ingested back in those days. The dog would drink out of it. The cats would <laughs> drink out of it. Then we'd go in there and, and, uh, and drink out of it. But, but I tell you what, the one thing I remember is, well, when you were hot, and, and, and even, even out of that hose so many times, we'd, we'd sit there and drink that water out of that hose. It was refreshing. Amen. It just refreshed your body. You were burning up with with the heat of the summer, as we know down here in South Georgia. It can get hot. That water, that water out of the well was refreshing. And what God does here is he talks about the well, and he talks about it as if those buckets coming out of the well is what it ought our salvation ought to be like. Our salvation ought to come out of us like those buckets of water that comes out of a well. We ought to be refreshing. We ought to be giving life. We ought to be able to comfort people with our salvation. Just as those that were in the hot sun back in those days here in Isaiah that needed that bucket of water. That water was gave you life. You know, you can't live but a few days without water. I mean, it just, your body needs water. Whatever the percentage of, I can't remember the, the biology uh, uh, teachings, but we're 98 something, isn't it, Jim? Or Maybe a little less than that. Less than that. Uh, so we're, we're, whatever it is, it's, uh, I shouldn't have said 98 because that's kind of probably way off. 
And somebody's going to say, yeah, oh, it's only 67% water. <laughs> well, whatever it was, we're made up of a lot of water. Amen. And we've got to have water. And you're not going to live long without water. And you, so the wells of salvation, it's a picture of, of that refreshing that refreshing water is supposed to come out of us. When you meet somebody, when you talk to somebody, we should be refreshing to them. Now, a lot of times we're not. A lot of times what we want to do is unload on them all of our all of the, the, uh, the sickness and the health problems and the problems in life and things like that. And, and, and we all need to sometimes talk to people and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I tell you what, if you're saved, if you're saved, people ought to know it. People ought to be able to, to, to hear from you. And we ought, to, we ought to allow our salvation to be seen, to pour out of us, to talk to people. And that's what, that's what I want us to look in Isaiah chapter 12. Notice what it says. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Now look at verse 3. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Draw water out of the wells of salvation. That, that well of salvation is us. And we should allow that water to come out of us. It says with joy, the wells, that, that water comes out of the well of salvation. Boy, we ought to be filled. We ought to be filled with the refreshment of what God has done for us. Amen. Even in the most difficult times, in the hard times of all that we face, people ought to be able to, to know that we are born again, that we are truly, and, and with some joy, be able to tell people that, boy, I tell you what, we can, we can help you. We can show you some, some, some help. We can, we can tell you about how you can be comforted, how you can find peace. We've got the answer, and we need to share that with the world that's out there that needs it so badly. And uh, boy, I tell you what, we've we've all we've all been able to 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 be uh, to, to to be able to tell people that we are saved. Uh, let let us do it with our lifestyle. Let us do it with our words. Let let them see Jesus Christ in us. That's what all these buckets of water is. It's what people get out of us. That what, what comes out of us. The, the wells of salvation. Uh, you, you're, you, should have, you should have some happiness in life that is able to, to flow out and to be able to share with somebody. You know, I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm a different person. And you know, all of us, all of us, no matter what we've gone through, all of us should be able to stand up and praise God. Praise God for something. You know, I was, uh, we were visiting with Steve and Delinda uh, at, uh, this past Friday, and, and one of the things that, that came out of his mouth was that here's a man that was burned severely. Here's a man that, that, that came close. I'm telling you, I saw the, where the flames leaped up into that cab and got around that stick and started melting it. And right behind that, that housing was lines of hydraulic fluid that was going up there. If those lines had melted from that fire, it would have been like a blowtorch that came out of that thing. And, and Steve wouldn't be sitting here today. And, but I tell you what, what came out of his mouth was, thank God. Amen. Thank God he took care of us. Praise God, he was there. You know, it's it's not poor me, it's praise God. Amen. And, and we need, all of us need to be able to stop sometime and say, you know what? Uh, yeah, I've been through the storms. 
I've, I've been through some difficulties. I've seen some things that have broken my heart. But praise God, he got, he's, got, he's getting me through sometimes. Sometimes it's, he hasn't got me through. He's just still getting me through. But either, yeah, I tell you what, he's got me through a lot of things, and some things he's still getting me through. Sure. But I tell you what, I'm glad he's walking with me every day, every time. Because there's so many things that are out there that are trying to rob us, rob us from the joy of what Jesus Christ did for us. The wells of salvation is you being able to, to allow that salvation to flow out of you, to be able to, to, to go out. Let me, let me just share with you something here today as we, we look at the wells of salvation because I want to look at some blessings that come when you allow that salvation to come out of you, when you allow that salvation to be seen by others and, to, and to, to, that people can can hear you and talk to you or see you, and they'd say, you know what, there's a Christian. There's a Christian lady. There's a Christian man. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect in our life. We know better than that. We all know that we're going to go through uh, uh, storms. We're all going to go through valleys. But you know what, what? Uh, we've got so much to, to be able to share with people how God is with us as we're going through those things. And so, uh, look, look at the, uh, first of all, in verse 1. Let me just share something with you here. In verse 1, you notice where it says, and, and in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Uh, I want to just stop right there just for a minute, right there on that word, those words there, I will praise thee. That's blessing number one. You're able no matter what you're going through, you're able to praise God. No matter what you're facing, you're able to praise God. You can, you can be able to stand and say, you know what? I don't feel good. I, I, I'm going through some hard times. I'm going through a sickness. I'm going through health issues. I'm going through financial issues. I'm going through this problem and that. We've all, we can name them. We can sit down and write them down. And probably if we all compared notes we would probably find that prob most of us, most of us can will be writing down the same problems. All of us don't ever think you're the only one. That's right. But you're, I'll guarantee you, somebody else sitting somewhere around here can match you uh, uh, line for line. All of us go through uh, difficulties and hardships. But listen, even even in the difficulties, I can still praise God. That's what, that's what the writer here, Isaiah, is saying. You know what? We went through, we went through the storms. We faced the difficulties. We have gone through battle after battle after battle. But yet, I can still praise God. I praise Him because of what He has done for me. I praise Him because He's with me. I praise Him because I'm still standing here right now. Amen. You know what? You're seeing me, not viewing me. So I've got a lot to be thankful for that the, just for the breath of life. Amen. I've got a roof over my head. I've got a car outside with three hubcaps, but still running good. Amen. You know what? I'm, I'm happy today. But I can sit down and I, I can tell you I've got, I've got problems just like everybody else. But yet, I just thank God for today. I thank God that he's got me here. Boy, I tell you what, yesterday, and, and, and Sue will verify this, but she's not in here, so I can lie a little bit about it. But, but, the, but I told her, I told her yesterday afternoon, I said, uh, baby, I'm going, I'm, I think I'm going to have to call off uh, the Bible college tomorrow night. She said, what? What's going on? Because she, and, and I told her, I said, I can't even hardly get up. I, I am hurting so bad. My legs are hurting. I hadn't been able to sleep. My, well, I tell you what, I, and, and the whole problem was I went outside and did something I shouldn't have done. I'm kind of like Steve. You know, when he, he's not supposed to go anywhere, and what did he do? He went and, and went somewhere. You know, so, so, you know, so Sue told me, when you get ready to move those buckets out there, big old five-gallon buckets with, 
with the trees planted in them and, uh, and everything. So uh, I, I rooted some, some, uh, some lemon trees off of Sue's daddy's lemon tree just because it's an important thing for him. So I, I did that, but I've got, I've got eight big old five gallon buckets that weigh probably 30 or 40 pounds. And so I went out there and, and lifted them up and moved them because the freeze was coming. So I brought them and put them, put them up neck on the on the porch and got them up things like that. Well, she told me, "What are you doing? You shouldn't do that." I said, "I'm fine. I'm fine." Well, you know what? Yesterday I couldn't move. I could not move. She said, "It was those lemon trees. I told you not to do it." I said, "Baby, you're always right. I shouldn't have done it." But I was close to just saying, I can't, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can stand up. Don't think I can do it. She said, well, sit down. Just sit down and do it. But, but don't, you know, but do it if you can. Stand. And I thought, you know what? That's what I need. I needed, I needed to be able to stand up and say, you know what? Even in, in, when I don't want to do it, I can do it because God's with me. I can praise God through whatever we go through. Folks, you can, whatever you face, you can praise God for it. You, because I tell you, God will get you through it. God, every, every problem we have is a lesson to help us learn that God's in charge. Everything we face is, is something that God will use to strengthen us, to make us stronger. I will praise thee. That's what Isaiah said. Even in all my problems, I'm going to praise you because you're going to use this to help me get stronger. You know, one of the things I've learned a long time ago, years ago, I know you don't, you wouldn't believe this now looking at me, but years ago I was a weightlifter. And I used to lift weights at the University of Georgia all the time. I would sit there and I would pump heavy weights and heavy weights and walk around and I was all buffed up and things like that stand in front of the mirror and, and make my muscles jump up and down and things like that. You know, and, you, and boy, you just, but the thing that I learned about lifting weights is you got to pay the price to, to, to get something out of it. And you know what? Sometimes we don't want to pay the price to get something out of what God's got for us. Isaiah said, I paid the price, but I can still stand here and praise him. I can still stand. Folks, you can praise him because God's got something out of it. He'll, he'll use it uh, for your for something that you'll be able to do that nobody else can. I, I, I met with some folks that, oh, some time back, I can't remember how far it was, that had gone through a terrible tragedy. And I sat down with them, and they were weeping and crying over a tragedy, and I told them, I said, I realize that you don't understand this right now, but understand that one day, somebody's going to come to you with the same problem. They may come to me, and I'm going to say, well, I'm sure going to pray for you. I tell you, but you know, one of the things I couldn't say, I know how you feel. Because you see, I never went through it. I, I don't know how you feel. I've never been through that. But you see, you went through something that nobody else has been through. And, and somebody can come to you one day that goes through it, and you can tell them, I know how you feel. I've been there. And you can tell them, and God will get you through it. God got me through it, and God will get you through it. That's what Isaiah is saying. You can praise God, no matter what you go through. Look, look at verse 1 a little bit further down. He says, Though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away. Here's your second blessing right there. You find peace with God. When, when, when you allow your salvation to flow out of you, you'll find peace with God. You see, Isaiah said, you know, you were angry with me, Lord. You were angry at what I had done, how I handled the situation. You were angry. But he said, but you know what you did? You, turn, you turned your anger away from me. You didn't take it out on me. Well, I tell you what, sometimes, sometimes some of the, the greatest lessons is when we don't get punished for what we deserve. Sometimes it's just sitting there and saying, well, I tell you what, uh, I deserved it, but they had mercy on me. 
They, they loved me. They showed me. They showed me that they were not going to, to respond to that. that. That's what God is wanting us to see. That God loves us. And even in his anger, sometimes toward us, for breaking that covenant with him, from turning away from him, from walking away from him, from turning our back on him. So many times we deserve for him to come down on us. But you know the good news is that most of the time, God is slow to anger. I, I'm glad that God said he was, he was one that was very slow to anger. Well, I tell you, that's a, what a blessing it is that he's a God that will love us through the storms that we go through. He will love you through the sins that you go through. He will love you through the things that you break with his relationship. God wants us to, to, to have that salvation. Let that salvation pour out of us because the more that it pours out of us, the wells of salvation that come out of us, the more that that happens, the more that God has mercy on us, the more that God is able to say, you can have peace. I'm going to give you that peace that you need to go through life, to be able to face the difficulties of life. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad that the second blessing that you and I find is that we can find peace with God. If you'll just let that salvation come out of you, let people see what God has done uh, with you then you'll find so much peace in your heart, no matter what you go through. I want you to, in verse, verse 1, the last part of that, it says, and thou comfortedest me. Here's the third blessing. You're going you're gonna to find comfort with God. You're going to find comfort with God. Boy, I'm glad. He said, you're going you're gonna to be able to praise me, number one. You're going to be able to find peace with me, number two, and number three, you're going to find comfort. Comfort because you are allowing your salvation to come out. Let, let them see it. Let people know that you're born again. Let them see that you're a Christian. You don't talk like that. You don't act like that. You don't, you don't allow that to come out of you. We have to guard ourselves so that, so that when we get around people, they'll know that we are born again. And that we are truly God's <laughs> children. And that's what, that's what it takes. We've got to be able to show that. You know the world out there, their idea of church people are the, the word hypocrites. That's, that's just about all you ever hear. Well, I don't want to hang around with a bunch of hypocrites. Well, I tell you what. You know what? That's uh, how hypocritical is it uh, to be able to sit there and judge others uh, and and. And to sit there and think, well, you're okay. Well, you're not okay. Yet without Jesus Christ, you have no life whatsoever. Well, I tell you what, uh, I, what I've found is that uh, hypocrisy is not found in the church. Most of the Christians that I know uh, are people that truly are doing everything they can to try to follow the Lord. Do you, do you fail God? Of course we fail God. We all know that we fail God. But that's not hypocrisy. That's just the old flesh. And listen, we're, I think all of us are trying to live the best we can for the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to let people see it. That's what he's, the wells, that, that's what he's talking about here. Let those buckets of water flow out of us and we will be able to find comfort with God. And that God will give you some comfort. I'm glad... I can go to bed tonight, put my head down on that pillar, and if I don't wake up in the morning, let me tell you something. I know where I'll be. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, that's a good comfort. I'll tell you another great comfort. Uh, I, 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 I buried both of my parents, my mom and dad, and I told the church at each one of those funerals, they left me nothing. The only thing that, that dad left me was a ring that he wore just about all his life. And what I did was I melted it down, I took all the diamonds out of it, and I had two little rings made out of it with the diamonds that were in that. 
Two little gold rings with diamonds on top. And my daughter out in Arizona wears one. And my daughter over in Waycross wears the other. They've got their papa's rings on their fingers. That's it. But that's what he left me. And what did mom leave me? Bills. And, and that was it. They lived on social security. They, they, they just they lived at, uh, just to try to get through. You know what? One of the things that, but I told the church, but the greatest thing they left me was that I know where they are. Amen. That's right. I know where they are. And I'll see them again one day. You see, that's, that's greater than all the gold and silver in the world. That's right. That I, I know where they are today. Listen, he comforts me by that. He comfort, God will comfort you. One last thing real quick, and I'll close out in verse 2. He says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I want you to notice that. And not be afraid. There's my fourth blessing right there. You find security in God. You find security in God. I'm not afraid of what's going on in the world today. I'm in the hand of God. I mean, I, I know that I know there's lots of things going on that, that people are panicking about. I know there's things all over the world that people are worried about. And rightfully so. We should all pay attention to what's going on. Our families are important. Our homes are important. Our lives are important. We do, we do need to pay attention to things like that. But you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because everything's in the hand of God. That's right. Everything's in the hand of God. As I told somebody the other day, they said, well, what do you think about that? I said, you know, the one thing I do know, I read the last book in this, in this Bible. I read the last book. I've taught the last book. I know it chapter by chapter. And I can tell you, we're not leaving until God calls us home. I, I'm not going anywhere until it, until God has appointed a time for me. And listen, if my time is today, praise God, it was my time. But, but I'm not afraid of it because we're in the hand of God. Why, why do I fear uh, of all these things? I've got to be cautious about things. I, sometimes it's good that we take precautions. We do. We try to do all we can to try to take precautions over things. We need to keep our eyes out for things. We need to be cautious about where we go and what we do. But I'm still in God's hands. Amen. And, and, and if God wants to take care of me, I could, walk, I could walk right through the middle of Baghdad right now and not even fear if God wanted me to walk there because he would be right there with me. Listen, they threw them boys in the furnace and they and when the king looked in there, they were walking around talking. Amen. And they, right. when God's with you, there ain't no fire that's going to burn us up. Don't worry about it. That, that, well, I'll tell you what, that old, them boys got into the furnace and they came out of it. And, uh, and boy, we all came. So listen, folks. Let the, let the wells of salvation come out of you. Let folks know what God has done for you. And there's so many blessings when we are sharing God through our life, right. through our testimony, through our lifestyle. Let them see that we are the children of God. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we do thank you and we praise you for all that you do for us. And Lord, I do pray that you'll strengthen us and help us to be that your children help us to be the, uh, the the ones that know without a doubt that you have your hand upon us and that we are protected through your strength and your power. Help us to share the word of God with everybody we come in contact with. Let them see it in our life. Let them hear it in our voice. Let folks know through our life that we are truly born again. Now, Lord, I do pray if there's anybody here that's not born. Somebody might be here that is uncertain of their eternal life. Lord, I pray that come and talk to me. Come and talk before it's too late. So Lord, we do thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. All right.